So, right, a fun little activity where we take <laughs> their, uh, all everyone at the same length of pipe cleaner, and everyone's created some slightly different shapes. We've got longer rectangles. We've got kind of square ones here. Blue ones are square, bro. Oh, yeah, that's right. Some squares going on. <laughs> that blue one's the blue one's the blue. And this is what the. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're just gonna forget about that. That's, a, that's, that's, that's your personality. I want to. I want to come back to that at a later point. So just keep it in the back of your mind. But I first want to talk about oh, this topic. Now, up until this point, we've been looking at this quite conceptually. This idea of a maximum and a minimum. There's some conditions that I apply to stationary points, and if they meet those conditions, they're either a, a maximum or a minimum. Next up. But let's just think broader than mathematics. When are we interested? When are we interested in the maximum and minimum of certain things? When are we just just in general? When are we interested in the max thing or, money. The, or the smaller money. thing? Money. Money. Okay, let's look at the money. Oh, Ah. You want to maximize. You want to maximize money, or more in general, we don't just maximize money. A company wants to maximize its profits, right? How much money it's actually taking and keeping, right? Not just the money that they receive, but the money that they actually get to take home. That's maximizing profits. Uh, minimizing. Heard Natasha say something? Minimize disease. Um. <laughs> no, I will not that. Efficiency. That's that's one type. That's one type of maximizing, right? Having efficient. Oh, we can't use the word efficient. Unless it's electrical. Unless it's electrical, not efficient. Right. Humans naturally, right? We want to do the least work to produce the most amount of output, right? Whether that's studying, you want to study a certain amount to produce a certain mark. And after a certain point, the more and more you study, you know, the less marks, yeah, the less marks that's really going to benefit. So you want to minimize to maximize. Exactly. Uh, you want to minimize the amount of work you do. You want to maximize what, though? Your, your mark. Yeah, you want to maximize. You minimize your work, you maximize your mark. Uh, another few examples. We could minimize... The amount of fuel yeah, yeah. on a flight, maybe? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> or, what do we do here? That's a square. Oh. Make it even. <laughs> what did we do here? Maximize well, area. Much we were trying to maximize our area. Good. Maximize area with a pipe cleaner. Alright. So. We understood mathematically it's maximization and minimization. Okay? And now we're starting to see that maximum and minimum are not terms we just use mathematically. We use them in everyday life. So, when we are looking at these questions, the topic is called applications of maxima or minima. Or, or, we also call it optimization. Okay, this idea of optimization is trying to make, as Natasha said, efficient processes. Right? Having the best output with the least work put in. And there are a few steps we take. Okay. The steps that we take are we draw a diagram if we can. We want to see what variables are involved. We want to form an equation if they don't give it to us. And lastly, we want to find maximum min using stationary points and justify it. Okay? So there's some steps here which are new. Right? But look at step four. This is what you've been doing pretty much over the past few lessons. You've been trying to find max or mins using stationary points, but the important thing is, what do you have to do? Justify. Just, you have to classify them, right? Just because there's a stationary point, it can be a max or a min, but you need to show that you know which one it is. Yeah. And there are two ways you can do that. You can use the table method or you can use the secondary. Secondary, good, right. Let's look at an example of this, okay? And this is gonna be quite different, but let's just read through it. Let's suppose that the equation for the profit of a company, um, let's call that Y, the profit as Y, in dollars is determined by the number of items sold, X. Right? So that makes sense. Right? The, potentially, the more you sell, um, the more you receive. But the key word here is profit. Right? It's not just the money that you get in. Because when we look at money getting in, the more you sell, the more you'd receive. How much you take. Yeah, but how much you take back might not always be that case. Why is that? Well, let's think about it, right? When I produce something, costs what do, yeah, it costs money, right? So at a certain point, maybe I'm making more money, more money, but maybe after a certain point, maybe I'm not making money anymore. Yeah, we want to look at that. Outsource. 
Good, yeah, yeah. So we want to we want to look at that process. Let me look at this function over here, right? I know that this is a quadratic function, and if I look at it, it's clearly not linear, right? This function is clearly not linear, but it will have a maximum, won't it? Mm -hmm. Graphically, we can see that maximum would occur just at the top there, right? But this function is not just representing a parabola. It's much more powerful than that. It's representing what? The profit, of, the a profit of a company. So this function represents the profit of a company. Look. <laughs> so, <laughs> what we're going to do is, <laughs> we're going to see at which point does the maximum occur. Remember, x represents the number of things that I'm selling. So, again, right, we want to go through these few steps. And we can actually skip to the third one in this case. I'm going to make it a bit easier for you. I'll show you how to develop one and two in a second. <clears throat> but we can step, skip to step three because we've got that equation over here. So this is part A. I've got y is equal to negative x squared plus 750x plus 1200. Now remember, I'm looking for the maximum. But for part A, they just want to know what's the expense if no items are manufactured. So if no items are manufactured, what's my x value? Zero. Zero, right? So. Let x equal to zero for no items. But it's still going to be. Is that because no items were sold? Yeah. Is that because yeah. it says no items? Yeah, that's right. No items are manufactured. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, I should say it. That should be the same, really. <coughs> should say sold, hey. Okay, and if I just substitute x equals to zero in here, what do I get? Zero squared. You just get 1,200. Yeah, you just get 1,200. Now why is that? Well, potentially, you know, maybe there's like rent, or maybe you've got some machinery that you purchase. So you need, even if you don't make any, 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 if you don't manufacture any um, items, you've still got a cost involved. Okay. What about part B? I want to find the number of items needed to maximize the profit. So anytime I'm thinking maximize, it doesn't matter what, which context I'm in. So you want to always equal over 1200, or the other two sections. Well, if that, that's for profit. So this is an equation that represents profit. Now this is the difficulty. You're going to have to try to find the maximum on the graph. Yeah, right. And it may seem strange that we can represent the sales of something using a mathematical equation. Okay. But that is the concept that I'm teaching you today. That we can actually represent situations using mathematical expressions. So in this case, all of our rules of calculus still apply. I can find the maximum point of my profit by using those same processes. Any time in calculus when we look at maximum, what is the first step we've always done? Dash. Yeah, we found the first derivative. Yeah. The first derivative allows me to find stationary points, and then from there I can find any maximum or minimums. So y dash, I can use my normal rules of calculus. I've got negative 2x plus 750. But, but, for the maximum, I need to have a certain condition, let's say, or for a stationary point. It has to be greater than zero. Let y dash. Oh, sorry, not x. Yeah. Let y dash, my first derivative, has to be equal to zero. Because remember, my gradient needs to be zero. Yeah, horizontal. Yeah. Right? Makes sense. That's where the maximum point occurs. Yeah. So I've left that graph up there just to show you what's actually going on. Whoa! That's the gradient function. The, uh, this is. That's not the grade, that's the original function. But what about the line at the top? Yeah, well, that's the point where the maximum occurs. That's okay. the maximum. Yeah. So if you want to really clearly lay it out, this is item sold, and this is profit, right? Oh, that is profit. Yeah, so at a certain point, right, I'm increasing, I'm increasing, increasing, but at a certain point, I'm going to maximize my profits, and after that, oh, then my profits start. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. profits yeah. start yeah. when you let y dash equal to zero, because it goes above zero. So I'm letting y dash equal to zero, because remember, what's my gradient at this point? Zero. Oh, it's, zero. it's zero. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this point. This point. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's keep going. I can still use my normals of calculus. This is just easy stuff. Zero equals the negative 2x plus 750. What am I trying to solve for? Yes. X. X. So I just write x equals 750. Good. Oh, oh, because we're looking for the maximum. Yeah. 375. 3. 7, 5. That question. Yeah, it does. Let's, let's just think about what we did there, right? We, we've done this so many times before, but in this case, it represents something special. Find the number of items needed to maximize the profit. So you're saying that, okay, I'm looking for the maximum profit, the highest point of y, which is occurring here, 
right? And x is representing the number of oh, items you need so to max maximize. So x is equal to 375. Yeah, so once I sell three or once I sell 375 things, that's, that's, that's the point where I have my maximum profit. That makes sense. But, but, uh, but why is it the maximum profit? Why couldn't it just keep going? Yeah, up? couldn't okay, it just keep yeah. selling? So, goods? So, so, so this is a hypothetical situation. In some situations, things might be linear, right? Think about your chocolate boxes that you've sold. If you sell one chocolate, what do you get? Like a dollar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the more you sell, the more, you, more money you get. In or some cases, of that. The, wor the world is complex, right? The oh, world is complex. Like if you sell a box of 50, you can, your maximum is be 50. No, not like that. Not like, the, world it's a, it's a, the world is complicated in the sense that it's not always linear. Right? In, in a linear sense, if you sell more of something, you get more money. But some processes, they are efficient up to a certain point, and then afterwards, you, yeah, you may start losing money from that. Okay, I don't know an exact situation. This is a hypothetical. Oh, yeah, yeah. It could happen in yeah. property and stuff. Potentially, yeah, yeah. Or, or um, uh, let's think about studying, right? The more effort that you put into something, after a certain point you've passed, <laughs> And then let's keep going, and, and the more hours you put in, yeah, you yeah. Let, the more, each hour gets you less marks each time. Right, so sure something like this might happen for. Wait, what did you just say? The more hours you put in, the less marks you have. Yeah, at a certain point, at a certain point. Oh, it's not going to be as effective. Yeah, the hour, yeah, the, it's, yeah, it's still going to get marks, it's yeah. just not as much. Our maximum yeah. mark is 50%. Yeah. Hey, let, let me keep going with this one here, right? How do I know this is a maximum? It's greater than zero. It's greater than zero. I haven't, you don't have this graph, the examiner doesn't have this graph, all they're seeing is this stuff here. And you found a station point and you said, X equals the training center. If you just stop here, that's not enough. You need to show that this is actually a maximum. It's and you can use two ways. You can use the table or the derivative method. Um, in this case, the table method is actually really quite simple.